Okay. Making sure that everything is going here. So I thought I'd jump on and talk about making a uh, another GURPS Dungeon Fantasy character because you may or may not have heard, but there's currently a Kickstarter going on for the dungeon fantasy role-playing game powered by GURPS, which is a box set of a standalone fantasy RPG based on the dungeon fantasy supplements for GURPS, but the rules have been modified to stand on their own. And, uh, it provides a complete game in and of itself. It's got characters, it's got monsters, it's got all the things a GM needs to build an adventure. It's going to have cardboard heroes and maps and a starter adventure. And you can go ahead and check that out at Kickstarter. Just do a search for Dungeon Fantasy Role-Playing Game and you'll be able to find it. Right now it's at almost... 80,000. It needs 100,000. There's still almost three weeks left to go, and it's doing pretty well. But right now, I'm not going to be dealing with that material because I don't have it, because it's not available yet. It's still being funded. So I'm going to work with the existing Dungeon Fantasy rules and uh, make a character out of them. Um, so I thought I would uh, take a look at The Knight, which is a pretty straightforward template. It's your combat heavy, uh, usually in good armor with a nice weapon uh, heavier than the flimsy fencing things that a swashbuckler might use um, but probably a little more finessable than the heaviest weapons that the barbarian would be using um, but basically this is your traditional fighter type and uh, they're going to be the ones that are in the front taking all the hits, dealing out all the hits, and generally making life miserable for the monsters. So like I usually do with these kinds of characters, I'm going to go ahead and copy the template over into my file. And just going to clean this up a little bit. The, uh, the knight doesn't have any special powers like some of the other templates do. Uh, it's just a straightforward combat character. So pretty much the bulk of what they're able to do is going to lie in their skills. But... The things that make them really interesting are going to come in the form of their advantages and disadvantages. And the knight, in particular, has a lot of advantage points, discretionary advantage points, to play around with. You see right here, on the, in the advantages section, that they get to choose 60 points from this whole list of things in addition to a few that are predetermined for them 
Um, which means that the knight has a lot of room to differentiate itself from other characters made with the same template. So you can get anything from the literal, you know, knight with, you know, uh, very uh, sort of leadery type with uh, a lot of. Well, dungeon fantasy doesn't doesn't dwell too much on social things, but they get they get things like the born war leader talent, which is about you know tactics and strategy. Um, they get penetrating voice so that people can hear their orders across the battlefield and so on. Uh, but you can also get very heavy into the combat side of things with uh, enhanced defenses of one form or another, as well as being a weapon master and just generally being stronger so you hit harder. There's a lot of room to uh, customize there. Now, one thing that having all those discretionary points is good for is uh, it gives room to play around with racial templates. Now that's something I haven't done in any of my previous GURPS character builds. So I thought I'd take a look at it in this one. Um, the racial templates uh, first show up here in Dungeon Fantasy 3, the next level. And uh, they come in uh, a range of uh, point values. Um, typic a lot of them are in the 20 point range, but some of them, uh, like Cat Folk, are 40 points. Um, some of the, uh, like, Pixie is 25, all the way up to the various Half Spirits, which are 75. Um, and those are pretty hard to fit into most of the, most of the um, templates. But the one I think I'm going to uh, take a look at for this character is a good old-fashioned dwarf uh, fighter. Dwarf knight, in this case. So the dwarf template... I'm going to go ahead and copy that into my file as well. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Dwarf. 20 points. Go ahead and clean that up a little bit. So the dwarf gets you a few things that are going to benefit a... Uh, fighter type. Um, first thing that jumps off the bat that I want to talk about, they get natural damage resistance, but they get the tough skin limitation. What that means is that um, anything that gets through their uh, the armor that they're wearing will have its damage blunted even further by the dwarf's natural damage resistance. But if it if it gets to that point it can it can still break the skin and deliver like poisons and things like that um it may or it may not uh it may not do actual hit point damage but it'll it may it ha still have uh, follow up effects like that um They get they get a uh, HT increase. They get a bunch of extra fatigue points, but they're slower than uh, most people. Uh, they're good at holding their liquor. They can carry a bunch. They can see. Uh, they can't. They don't have the the full dark vision that D and D would like to uh, give them, but they can see very well in the dark. And then they get levels of the pickaxe penchant talent which is a uh, a new talent that is introduced with their racial template uh, and it adds to axe mace forced entry prospecting thrown weapon axe mace and two-handed axe mace um, and it's only available to dwarves um, 
They also get the Dwarven Gear perk, which says that they get 10% off the final price of any gear that's qualified as Dwarven, um, which is a, a quality that can be uh, atta attached to various equipment, like weapons and things. And we'll get to that when we're, we're equipping this guy at the end. But uh, And then they're also resistant to poison, but they're greedy and they're stubborn. So... With that in mind, I'm actually going to go in and add that in to the advantages section because all told that that adds up to a positive point value of 20 points. So we'll put it under advantages because there's really no better place for it to go. But that means that I've already spent 20 points out of this discretionary fund. So I'm just going to drop that to 40 for my own reference. But that means I still have 40 points to spend in this area, which is is great. Um, and I can get all kinds of things. I can uh, I can actually spend 20 of it, buy up the uh, basic speed, which will also uh, help offset the movement penalty that Dwarf Racial Template gives. Um, that's one thing I might consider. But I should really be asking myself what kind of knight is this dwarf going to be and i think i like the idea of somebody who's you know like the the stereotypical kind of gruff uh no nonsense dwarf um possibly um a mercenary of some kind a former mercenary of some kind now turned dungeon delving adventurer um i think I think that uh, playing to the classic uh, tropes uh, might might serve me well here. So I'm probably not going to take any more. I'm, uh, I'm just going to say I'm not going to take any more levels of Born War Leader. Um, that I come with two to begin with. Don't really need any more than that. Um, I think this character is older. Uh, had a, had a career as a, a mercenary for however many years and then decided that um, straight out warfare was not what he wanted to be doing with his life anymore and decided I'm going to go into holes in the ground and steal, uh, steal money from things that other people don't consider people. Uh, so I'm not going to give him a uh, fit or very fit because... Maybe he's sort of lost a little bit of that mercenary edge. But this is somebody who knows how to fight. He's very good at defending himself. He's lived a long time. Uh, so I'm going to say that I'm going to give this... I'm going to buy this level of enhanced parry with one melee weapon for five points. And that's going to be with the axe mace skill because this is going to be an axe fighter um i'm also going to buy enhanced block for another five points because it's going to be an axe and shield fighter um i'm going to buy two levels of striking strength that's going to increase the base damage that i do with melee weapons so I'm up to 20. I still have 20 points left. Um, you know what? I like that idea of this being somebody with really good reflexes and reaction time. So I'm going to spend the last 20 points on a point of basic speed. Which, like I said, will also help offset the movement penalty for being a dwarf. So I'm just going to go ahead and that up here so I remember to work that in later and I'm gonna get the characters PDF up because I need the damage table because I don't have that thing memorized but I know right where to find it which is really all that matters so to find how much damage this knight does I take 
the strength of 14 plus the striking strength to first will be a, a, a effective strength of 16 which means that they have a thrust of 1d plus 1 and a swing of 2d plus 2 so I'm gonna go ahead and change those numbers there now dwarf gives a lifting strength of 2 which means that this dwarf's strength is effectively 16 for basic lift as well so I'm gonna go to the next page look at the basic lift table this I do know the math of but it was I was right here so I'm just gonna so their basic lift is 51 pounds that's a lot but this guy's gonna have a lot to carry so it's good to to get that up there his fatigue it's actually what dwarf gives three points so his fatigue will actually be 17 fatigue points which is great um, speed goes up to seven basic move is going to stay there at six because of the dwarf penalty okay so I'm done with the advantages section I'll clean that up later now I can move on to disadvantages so I get 20 points from this list and another 15 points from the next list or this list well gruff old dwarf mercenaries gotta have a bad temper clearly um, and that one requires a self-control number I'm actually gonna give it to him at nine so he's gonna fail it about as often as he makes it um, a little bit less but still and I will give him definitely don't want one eye um, hmm. I can never remember what the wounded disadvantage does let's take a look at that you have an open wound that will not completely heal for whatever reason. Botched surgery, backfired healing spell, etc. Uh, oof. Ooh, people can target my wound. Does half again as much damage. Uh, yeah, no, that's not that's not for me. Um, you know what? I'm going to actually go back here and make this self-control 12, bring that to 10, which means I have a little more, um, I'm going to give him the soldier's code of honor. Cause that makes sense for the, you know, old mercenary that has things like, you know, never leave a man behind, always keep your kit clean and all that stuff. Now I get 15 points from either that first list or the second list. Uh, he's already got greed, so I, I can't take that. Um, I... I don't want him to be a bully. That's just mean. Um, let's go with... You know, let me look at that code of honor because I always, I always question how things like code of honor soldier match with things like sense of duty. So code of honor soldier says an officer should be tough but fair, lead from the front, and look out for his men. An enlisted man should look out for his buddies and take care of his kit. Every soldier should be willing to fight and die for the honor of his unit, service, and country. Follow orders, obey the rules of war, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that seems to double with code of or sense of duty adventuring companion, so I'm not going to double dip there. I'm going to take overconfidence, because this guy's been there, done everything. I'm going to bring that down to 6, which means it's worth minus 10 points. And then I'm going to give... What the heck? Compulsive carousing. When this guy's in town, he likes to party. And that's going to be a 12. So that's all my points for disadvantages. Now, I also still get have the effects of the racial disadvantages because that's just part of being a dwarf. Um, but just have to remember those. Okay, now we get to the 
important part, skills. So the guy has brawling or boxing. Uh, just brawling. He's not a didn't study a particular martial art. Uh, I'm gonna give him fast draw knife because by the rules as written, there is no fast draw axe, but he's got the knife skill by default. So if he's a, if he needs to, he can he can whip one of those out pretty quick. I'm gonna give him regular wrestling instead of sumo because this guy isn't about slams and things. He might be about. Uh, grappling and takedowns, but not slams. Now I pick a ranged attack. I'm just going to give him crossbow because that seems to fit the... Uh, it both fits the backstory and it's also easy uh, as opposed to average or hard, so it gets a better skill level for the same amount of points. Then I pick one of these packages. And they are... Uh, one of one weapon skill uh, at 20 or 19 if it's flail. Uh, two weapon skills at 17 or 16 for flail. Uh, three weapon skills at 16 or 15. I think this guy's specialized. I think he just likes his axe. He's got his axe and he knows how to use it. So he's going to have axe mace at 20 for 24 points. He also gets all of these skills. Boo, 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 boo. Um, I think he knows how to take care of his weapon better than he knows how to take care of his armor. And he knows a good deal about weapons. He can appraise them and identify special features, things. He's got a little bit of leadership and some strategy and tactics at okay levels, but he's not an intellectual why I didn't invest in him more heavily. And finally, I can choose some background skills. So remember the Dwarven talent, the pickaxe penchant? It improves forced entry, so I'm going to take forced entry as one of these four skills. Um... Gonna take stealth just because it's very, very useful. Remember, your party's stealth is only as good as the worst party member. Um, this fella has picked up some first aid training over the years. And one more. Oh, he, he likes to party, so he's got he knows how to party. Okay, get rid of those. Get rid of that. And don't need that. Um actually I'm gonna use the symbol, but not there. It includes plus one for pickaxe pension. So that actually, I'm going to go look at the list that applies to axe mace, which is great. Um, and he's got one level of it. So the axe mace skill actually goes up to 21 for no extra points. Forced entry gets it. And it's going to go up to 15. Does he have anything else? He didn't take thrown weapon. He didn't take two-handed. He doesn't have prospecting. So, no, that's it. Um, so that's pretty much it for what's on the template. Now I just have to worry about uh, equipment. So we're going to go to the gear chapter. And uh, everybody starts off with a thousand dollars. I'm gonna 
which I'll just make a note of that. So remember, he gets 10% off Dwarven gear, and I know right off the bat that I want one piece of Dwarven gear, definitely, and that's going to be a Dwarven axe. The Dwarven quality on weapons uh, makes any weapon, so some melee weapons on the parry line here have a U. And the U means that you can't um, you can't attack and parry with the weapon on the same turn. Um, where's the... U means the weapon is unbalanced. You cannot use it to parry if you have already used it to attack this turn, or vice versa. So... Axes have that by default, but the Dwarven quality uh, says that it changes the parry from 0U to just 0, which means that there's no modifier, and it's not unbalanced. And it increases the cost by a cost factor of 4. So the cost factor system in Dungeon Fantasy, you add up all the cost factors, you add one, you multiply the base cost by that value. Um, so effectively, that means without any other modifiers, a Dwarven weapon costs five times what it, it normally costs, which for the axe is uh, $50. So it's a $250 item. Now, there are other fa things that I can add on. Uh, for instance, you can take Balanced, which means that you get plus one to skill with a, with a melee weapon. That's another plus four cost factor. So that would be a total of uh, nine times, which means it would be a $450 weapon. Um, I'm not sure I want to spend that much on this item... Although, I do actually get, because I get 10% off of that, it would actually be a $405, but that's still too much. So I'm going to go with the the 250 at 10% off, so it would be 225 Yeah, I know I could have done that math in my head, but I'm tired, and I don't care. So he has a Dwarven Axe. It costs him $225, and it weighs four pounds. Nothing compared to his basic lift. Now I'm going to open up one last, well one more book. It'll probably be the last one, but who knows. Low tech instant armor gives me a whole bunch of pre-generated pieces of armor that I can choose from. And the thing about armor is, really good armor is expensive, and it's heavy. The weight actually adds up alarmingly quickly. Um, but I want this guy to have good, uh, at least decent armor to start out with. Um, and I think I like the idea of a light male shirt. So I'm going to find light male. This is the torso piece. And I'm going to have it have sleeves as well. So the arms piece here. So it was 500 for the torso and 250 for the arms. And for weight... 12 pounds for the torso and 6 pounds for the arm. So we're going to go with a light male shirt. Torso and arms. DR3. The asterisk means that it's flexible. $750. And 18 pounds. Now, you'll note, 225 plus 750 is 975. That means I have $25 left to play with. But I have the option 
of getting some extra money by trading character points for money. Or by taking the signature gear uh, advantage. Now, either of those options requires me to have points left over to spend, which I do not. However, I have not given this character any quirks. Quirks are little uh, mildly disadvantageous traits that really more serve the goal of giving your character personality and helping you roleplay them better. They do have some very, you know, some typically minor uh, effects that will, you know, give you penalties or make you, uh, make people react to you differently. But mostly they're there for flavor. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Um... And there's a list of, of example ones in uh, in the in the book. Um, I I like to look through these first before I start creating my own because these ones have already been sort of codified and uh, and put together for for you to use. Um, I like. The idea of careful. This is a guy who is, um, while he believes in his ability quite highly because he's overconfident, um, part of that is the fact that he is always uh, cautious. Um, he knows that he's gotten as far as he has and survived as long as he has because he's always on the watch for danger. And then when danger shows up, he's ready for it. So I'm going to give him the careful quirk. He is also chauvinistic. He thinks that dwarves are generally better than everyone else. He's not going to rub your face in it, but you know, if, if, if there's a, if you're, if you're not exactly pulling your own weight, well, it's cause you're not a dwarf. Are there any other ones that jump out at me? Hmm. Well, he's not humble. I know that much. Oh, proud. Yeah, proud can go along with chauvinistic. That makes sense. And yeah, that's good. So that's that's three, three quirks gives me three points back, and I know exactly where I'm going to spend those. So if I go back to the knight template, because Dungeon Fantasy suggests that you uh, stick to what's on your template as much as possible. Signature gear is on the template, and weapon bond is on the template. Weapon bond is a perk, just sort of the opposite of a quirk, uh, except it's much more about mechanics than about uh, flavor. Uh, weapon bond means that that axe that he's so fond of is... Uh, it's better in his hands than other axes. And in fact, it's better in his hands than that than it itself is in the hands of somebody else. The effect of that is that it is uh, he gets a plus one to his skill when uh, when he's using that axe. The other two points I'm going to put into signature gear and two points in signature gear. Each point of signature gear gives $500 worth of gear for free 
Uh, and you, you pay the character points instead of uh, cash. And it is it has plot protection. Basically, um, if the GM takes it away from you, they have to give you a chance to get it back. They can't just destroy it outright. Um and it's just sort of it's a it's an important enough part of your character that you're you're paying for the privilege of not getting screwed over and losing it. So two points means that a thousand up to a thousand dollars worth of equipment can be made signature gear. I like the idea of making the axe and the mail shirt together be signature gear. So I'm just going to erase their price. Which means that I'm right back to the full thousand dollars of gear to spend. So I'm going to look at some more armor. He's currently not wearing anything on his legs. So I'm going to look at leg armor. And uh, I think he's just going to be wearing uh, medium leather on his legs. So that is a hundred dollars. Got DR2, and that's flexible as well. And remember, all of this DR is in addition to the one point of tough skin that he has. And that's 12 pounds. That's $100 I've spent. I will get him some leather boots. On his feet, and those leather boots are our DR2 as well for eighty dollars and three pounds. Uh, did I s headgear? Yeah, headgear. He definitely needs a helmet or at least a hat of some kind. Get him a pot helm. Um, We will get him a heavy leather pot helm. That covers his head, which is uh, DR3, and it is forty dollars and four pounds. Okay, so so far I'm up to 220 out of my thousand. So remember, he uses a shield. So I'm gonna come back over here to the characters book. Give him a shield. I'm gonna give him a medium shield. That gives him a defense bonus of two. What that means is that any attack that's coming at him from his shield side or straight on from the front, uh, all of his active defenses get an automatic plus two bonus. But again, only for ones coming from directly from the front or from the shield arm side. That's sixty dollars and fifteen pounds. Remember how I said that uh, the weight of equipment really really adds up quick? Well, there you go. Um, he knows how to use a knife, so I'm gonna get him a decent knife. He's going to have a large knife, but I'm going to go back to Dungeon Fantasy and look at those weapon qualities again. So remember how I said balanced gives a plus one to skill? There's also um, things like fine, which means it's very well crafted, it holds a good edge, um, and it doesn't break as much. Uh, it can be made out of meteoric iron, which makes it immune to magic, or it can be made out of orichalcum, which is completely unbreakable, um, or it can be uh, silver or silver coated. Um, or it can just be made ornate, which gives a good reaction uh, modifier. 
But I think the only one I really want for him is I want it to be a balanced knife because he's not as good with the knife, nearly as good with the knife as he is with the axe. Um, so I want to uh, make up for that, that skill a little bit. So that means that it's a plus four cost factor. So the large knife normally costs 40, but it's going to cost five times that. So it's $200 and it weighs one pound. Okay, so let's just do some math. Okay, so I'm at 480 out of 200. So at this point, I'm just going to start getting useful adventuring gear. Um, Dungeon Fantasy adds the Delver's Webbing, which is fun. It's basically a load-bearing vest uh, that makes it easier for you to grab things because they're all well positioned um, it also lets you have a helmet lamp which is fun uh, you put a like a like a miner's helmet lamp um, you can get a quick release backpack so a lot of people make the mistake in GURPS of saying uh, oh I'll just put it in my backpack and then I'll just drop my backpack when uh, I get into a fight so I'm not encumbered by all of my extra gear it's a great idea. Unfortunately, um, it takes time to take off a backpack and set it on the ground. Uh, you can make that a little bit faster by saying it uh, after you shrug it off that you're just going to drop it. But then the GM goes, OK, and then they roll to see if your potions break or whatever. Um, the quick release backpack is designed uh, to be dropped as a free action, um, but it still doesn't eliminate the GM rolling to see if your, you know, breakables get braked. Um, but it's still better than, you know, taking two or three seconds, two or three whole rounds in the beginning of combat to shrug off your, your backpack. Um, but it's expensive. It's $300 and I don't, I'm not made out of money. Um, so I am going to buy this fella a frame backpack, which is $100, holds 100 pounds, and weighs 10 pounds itself. And then a bunch of other stuff is going to go in there. So give him a blanket. For twenty dollars and four pounds. Uh, I'm gonna buy a a pouch for spare chain for spare coins. Um, that's gonna hold about three pounds of small loose stuff. Like I said, usually coins, and it's gonna cost. $10 and weigh a fifth of a pound. I'm going to get personal basics. Those are the uh, things that you need to be able to do uh, uh, wilderness survival, camping, and that sort of thing. So it's got your, you know, your multi-spork and your, your tinder box and everything. And it's $5 and one pound. Uh, you don't need no tent. Uh, might get a sleeping fur if it's, gets to be winter, but he definitely wants a wine skin for holding water. That holds a gallon of liquid. And it's $10 and it's a quarter of a pound. What am I at? Uh, Six twenty-five. Still got a ways to go. Oh, this guy knows how to use a crossbow. Let's take a look at crossbows. Yeah, we'll get him a uh, we'll get him a crossbow. That's one hundred and fifty dollars, and 
six pounds. And we'll get a hip quiver, which holds 20 arrows. Or bolts. And it's $15 and one pound. Uh, bolts. Bolts weigh 0 0.06 pounds, which means that they are $1.2 each. So that's $24 for Quiverful, and 1.2 pounds. There's a there's a formula for it in um, in the book, but I, I remember it, so I just did it. Um, basically, you find the weight of the ammunition, you multiply it by twenty, and that's how much it costs. I'm sorry. That's a lie. That that formula does work for uh, arrows, but crossbow bolts just use the same price as arrows. So it's actually more expensive, even though they're lighter. Um, it still weighs the same, though. The, what weighs the what I'd already calculated. Um, that's still it's sixteen dollar difference. It's not that huge. Um, now I could get bodkin points, which make it armor piercing um, but that would change the damage type um, you know what yeah he uses the crossbow to punch through uh, armored uh, targets and also for typical range stuff so it doesn't uh, it doesn't change the cost or the weight but it does give it an armor divisor of two which means any dr is halved. Um, I really should keep tr better track of how much I'm spending here, but that's what calculators are for. Okay, I have $170 left. Is there anything else that I need? Get some torches. Give him three torches. I will give oh yeah I'm gonna give a, a crowbar for that forced entry that's twenty dollars and three pounds um, so You know what? Instead of rations, I'm going to be giving him dwarven rations. Um, because I get that discount. So I'm going to get 10 days of dwarven rations. It would normally be $50, but because I get that 10% discount, it's $45, and they weigh 10 pounds. Well, one pound per per meal. It's not 10 days, it's 10 meals. Um, nine oh four. You know what? I think that's good. I'm gonna give. I'm just gonna note down ninety six dollars in coin. And that'll go in the pouch. And just doing a double check, make sure there's nothing really important that I need. Doesn't look like it. So I think that will just about do it for this character. Um, a nice dwarven knight. I'm just making sure that I've got everything. Double check. So I can work out 
the defenses. This guy will have a dodge of starts with the basic speed of seven. Everybody gets a flat plus three. And then this guy has combat reflexes, which gives a plus one to all active defenses, which means that the knight's dodge is 11 or 13 if it's on the shield side. Parry is based on the weapon skill, which for most cases is going to be 21 plus one for the weapon bond, 22. We take half of that, so it starts at 11. Everybody gets the plus three for free. And another plus one for combat reflexes. And another plus one for enhanced parry. Which means that within axe, this fellow has a 16 with parry. And then block uses the same calculation, but it's based on shield skill. So the shield, 16, half of that is 8, plus the 3 for free, plus 1 for combat reflexes, plus another one for enhanced block. Means that, and that block, you can all, you, it has to be on your shield side because block is using the shield. So it gets the plus 2 all the time that it can be applied. Uh, so that is a 15 block. So it, while this guy is just starting out with okay armor, he's got DR4 over most things. Uh, DR, or most things above oh, the waist, and DR three below the waist. Uh, it's really the active defenses that are going to keep this guy chugging along for the, for the duration of the fight. Um, a 16 parry is ridiculous. Um, it basically means that it doesn't matter if they hit you unless they're doing fancy tricks to lower your defense. You're just going to parry them. At least the first one. Uh, there, with parry, there is a cumulative penalty. You can parry the first attack for free. Second attack, it's a minus four, and then a minus eight, and then so on. So after the first parry, you're probably going to sw switch to another defense. Although um, the second parry is actually still going to be better than his dodge. Now, dodge is going to be affected by how much weight this guy is carrying. So I'm going to go ahead and add up the, all the weight of the equipment and compare that to the character's basic lift. Ninety six point six five pounds. So going back up, the basic lift is 51. And we'll go and take a look at encumbrance. Because I don't think I've talked about encumbrance in any of these character builds very much. So encumbrance levels. No encumbrance is anything up to your basic lift. So for this guy, any amount of weight up to 51 pounds. Light encumbrance is up to double that, which is where we fall. So the way that works is uh, the dodge would go down by one for encumbrance, and basic move would be multiplied by uh, 0.8. So it would also drop by... Uh, it would actually drop by... Uh, it would drop down to four because you round down. Um, well, you drop all fractions, is the way they word it. Um, so while carrying all this equipment, uh, the dodge would be penalized by one point, and the move would be down to four. Um, now, a lot of this uh, equipment uh, 
may be stored in the backpack and that may be set down if there's enough time to set it down. But it's actually not going to make enough of a difference, I think, just eyeballing it to drop this character below that light encumbrance level. So those numbers could actually be worked out on the sheet and then just reference that. Um, and there's a lot of that sort of thing in GURPS where if you just take a moment to work it out ahead of time, you don't have to do it while you're in the thick of things and it gets a lot easier. Um, so that is a Dwarven Knight and, uh, that is an example of another dungeon fantasy character. Um, the Kickstarter is, like I said, going on now. It's going to be going on till the end of the month. And, um, everything they've told us about it makes me think that it's going to streamline this process even more. I mean, I've been doing this. It took me about an hour uh, to go through all of that. But I was, you know, taking a little bit of time to explain what everything meant. And uh, I was going through uh, equipment. Um, not, you know, very thoroughly, but enough to stop and think about things. Um, there's actually a... Uh, dungeon fantasy supplement that gives uh, pre-worked um, selections of equipment for each of the different templates that speeds things up even more. It's really, I mean, I've, I've made dungeon fantasy characters in 20 minutes um, just by, you know, picking a template, uh, making the, the, the choices that are on it and then picking a appropriate um, equipment package. Um, Dungeon Fantasy is going to uh, reformat how the templates are presented. So if you find this to be daunting, and I understand it, it I, I'm I've trained myself over over time to read this very quickly, but for a lot of people, it's very hard to parse this um, this kind of wall of text. And I get that, but the formatting um, in the Dungeon Fantasy RPG is going to make that uh, easier to read and quicker to parse um, to get you making your character even faster. Um, with the Kickstarter, you can get the the box itself, which you can see here, all the books that are that are in it. Um, there's an add-on for a four panel GM screen. Uh, there are also add-ons for PDF bundle of the books plus PDF bundles of the existing dungeon fantasy materials. So you've got your beginner set, which has, uh, the, uh, mirror of the fire demon adventure plus the treasure books and the monsters and a few other things. Then there's the expert, which has like uh, the next level, which I got the racial bon uh, things out of. The box is going to have a selection of racial templates in addition to the uh, profession templates, but the next level is going to have uh, uh, many more in addition to um, uh, power ups, which are ways to group abilities for advancing. Um, classic is going to have the original Dungeon Fantasy um, books, which are sort of superseded by what's in the, the box up here. Um, you can also add on a uh, subscription uh, to Pyramid Magazine or back issues of Pyramid Magazine that feature Dungeon Fantasy material. Um, and there's even the I Want It All level, where for... Uh, $250, you get, I think it's about $500 worth of uh, product at this point. So the $250 level is a tremendous deal. Um, but go ahead and check out the uh, Kickstarter. It's doing, it's doing respectably well, and I'm, I'm really excited to see what other 
uh, stretch goals and things get added on uh, if it if it gets up even higher. Uh, I want to thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you uh, in the future. Thanks.